Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today we are going to start solving the Arrow Debru equilibrium, and that's going to take a while, so we're going to split that into two parts. First, we are going to review the Arrow Debru setup that we talked about in a previous video. Then we are going to talk about the strategy on how we're going to solve this thing, and then we're actually going to get into solving it. So part one of this solve, we're going to take the first order conditions and find the Euler equation. The Euler equation is where we're going to relate consumption today to consumption tomorrow. Then we are going to use that Euler equation to find out how we can relate consumption today to consumption tomorrow. Then in part two, we will find prices and the actual equilibrium allocation. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. Let's go ahead and begin with a review of the Aaron DeBrew equilibrium setup. So last time we talked about the Aaron DeBrew setup where we have two people, Bill and Dave. Note that we're going to give these people actual utility functions. We don't necessarily need to for this problem, but I'm going to just to make it a little more concrete. So each of them has a utility function. That's just a natural log of their consumption. We said that Bill gets two coconuts in even periods and zero coconuts in odd periods. We said that Dave gets zero coconuts in even periods and two coconuts in odd periods. So they're opposite. We know that they are each solving their household optimization problem. So they're solving their utility maximization problem. We've got this market clearing condition right here. And we know that in the Arrow Debrew world, they are trading promises to pay a certain number of coconuts. And here's this Arrow Debrew market that we talked about last time. Now let's go ahead and talk about the strategy for solving the Arrow Debrew equilibrium. First, we're gonna set up the Lagrangian. Then we're gonna take four like representative first order conditions. So we have a first order condition for Bill's consumption in time t. We have a first order condition for Bill's consumption in time t plus one. And similarly, we have first order conditions for Dave, both consumption in period t and period t plus one. Then we're going to combine those first order conditions together to find the Euler equation. Then we're going to, in that second video, use the market clearing and the budget constraint to solve for the final allocation. So here's the Lagrangian, where all I've done is put that utility maximization problem into Lagrangian form. And now we'll just take some first order conditions. So what is the derivative of this thing with respect to Bill's consumption in time t? Well, it's just beta to the t. It's one over c t b. And that's going to be equal to lambda p t. How could I do that so quickly? Well, remember, it's an infinite sum, so we could just write it out. So this is equal to beta 0, natural log of CB0, plus beta 1, natural log of C1 beta. And I could just keep going. And this is going to be beta T natural log of CTB. I don't care about the beta zero and the beta one. I'm only thinking about CTB, which only appears here. And similarly for this budget constraint and similarly for the CT part of the budget constraint, it's only the lambda PT that I care about because that's the only part that CTB appears. Now for CT plus one, all I'm going to do is move this first order condition for one period. So this is beta T plus one, one over C T plus one B, that's going to be equal lambda P T plus one. We'll combine these in a second, but for now, let's just take them. And it's gonna be the same for Dave. So Dave is going to have a first order condition in period T of beta T one over C T D, which is equal to lambda P T. And then again, that other first order condition is going to be beta T plus one times one over C T plus one D which is equal to lambda pt plus one. Now we can put these together. So maybe I'll just divide these first two so I can get rid of these lambdas. So that is going to tell me that beta t over beta t plus one times one over c t b divided by one over c t plus one b is equal to pt over pt plus one. Notice that both Dave and Bill face the same prices. So this is going to be also equal to beta T over beta T plus one times one over C T D over one over C T plus one D. Now let's ignore prices for a hot second and let's just also ignore these betas and let's just focus on this guy being equal to this guy. 
So what does this mean? This means that we have CT plus one B over CTB is equal to CT plus one D over CTD. Now I look at this and I say, okay, this means perfect consumption smoothing. This means that both Bill and Dave are consuming the same number of coconuts every day for their entire infinite lifetime. And I know this because I can look at this and say the only way this is going to be true is if both of them are constant over time. Now, what if you can't necessarily look at that and see that? Well, let's use the market clearing to see that. So I can solve this equation right here for CBT plus one. So maybe I'll just highlight this in pink. And then that just means this goes over here to be CBT, which I've written down here. Notice that we have this market clearing condition and we know that the endowment is two in every period. So now I also have market clearing in period T. And since I know that it works for every T, it also has to work in T plus one, which means that CBT plus one plus CDT plus one has to equal two because the endowment in every period is two. Now I can just substitute this in for CBT plus one and I can just rearrange a little bit. I can, for example, put this fraction together and then I have CDT plus one times CDT plus CTB over two. So now I have Dave's consumption in period T plus one times the sum of Dave and Bill's consumption in period T over CTD. Well, I know from market clearing that this is two, which means that I can take away both of these and make this equal to one which means that CT plus 1D equals CTD for all T, which means that for Bill, we're going to have his consumption in period zero is going to be the same as in period one, is in period two, all the way out to T plus one, all the way for his infinite lifetime. And also Dave is going to consume the same amount of coconuts today, tomorrow, in period zero, in period one, and every day for the rest of his life. The next time, what we are going to do is we are going to solve for the prices in this economy, and we are also going to solve for those allocations. So hopefully this was helpful in terms of getting that perfect consumption part of Arrow the Brew Equilibrium. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.